Off the Cuff is supported by Patreon. Join today and become an honorary producer with in-show credit, plus get other Off the Cuff gifts and merchandise. Hi, everybody, and welcome to the season premiere of Off the Cuff. It is great to be back. I'm very excited. Now, working up to this episode, I was looking at all sorts of recipes, complicated ones, unusual ones, ones from far away. I wanted to come in here and just blow your socks off with a recipe that you would really, really love. And all I kept thinking about was what my father used to say. Yeah, he said, when in doubt, use the kiss method. No, no, that's that's the rock band uh, kiss. I like them, but that's not what he meant. He meant this. Yeah. Keep it simple, stupid. <laughs> that was my nickname. No, <laughs> I'm kidding. And as usual, Dad was right. So I went back to basics. Today's recipe, you're gonna love. And it's simple. I'm gonna show you how to make a low-carb and delicious beer-battered fish and chips oh yes it's gonna be low carb it's gonna be delicious it's gonna be easy to do and you're gonna love it the only question you're gonna have when this is done is how do you do it well i'm using a new flour recipe i found on youtube i'll tell you more about that later that's keto and you can make in your own house it makes a great batter and it makes a great uh, flour you can put it into you'll see I'm also going to replace potatoes. Now, I know what you're saying. How do you replace potato? You really can't replace potatoes, but you can substitute. And I found a good one. Instead of using potatoes for the chips, I'm going to use jicama. Oh, yes. I've done it before, and it comes out quite good. The only question you're going to want to know is, where are the carbs? Where are the carbs? Are they in the fridge? <coughs> nope. How about the cupboard? <coughs> nope. I know, they must be in the oven. Mm. Nope, no carbs there. So what happened to the carbs? I guess you could say they're missing. <laughs> About those missing carbs, Mr. Mitchell. Wait a minute, who are you? How'd you get in here? I'll ask the questions. Okay. Who are you? How did you get in here? <sighs> well, this is my kitchen. This is my cooking show. And I'm Craig Mitchell. And that's what they all say. Who else would say that? All right, all right, who are you? I'm a private detective, and I have some questions for you. No, no way! For over 10 years. Prove it. Name, Greg Mitchell, male, height 5'11", bearded, weight... Oh, uh, uh, um... Let's just say corpulent. Thank you. You're 62 years old, you moved to L.A. 21 years ago, you're a loyal Met fan, you're, you're obsessed with Star Trek and superheroes. When you were nine years old, your favorite food was creamed spinach. You once owned a 1971 AMC Gremlin that was purple with a racing stripe. Yeah, it looked like a Minnesota Vikings football helmet. You have a sister Susan and a brother John, just, just like, like the wing song. song. Yep. You had a dog named Mr. Pug. You currently have a cat named Andy. You were diagnosed with type 2 diabetes in 2016 and started a little show called Off the Cuff, healthy cooking with your aforementioned self. You're terrified of spiders, flying, and people with big thumbs. Lucky guesses. All right, what do you want to know? What did you say you were cooking? Fish and chips. Really? Yeah, really. That's pretty funny. What's so funny about it? I don't see any potatoes. Those are a pretty big part of fish and chips, wouldn't you say? Yeah, but so happens I'm not using potatoes. Oh. I'm using this. A breast implant? It's not a breast implant, that's jicama. Are you sure? It looks like a bee cup. It actually does look like a bee cup, but I'm pretty certain it's jicama. Let's back up. Earlier you mentioned that the carbs were missing. Yeah, it's a low carb recipe. There's no, there's low carbs. Yeah, they're missing. All right, so where are they? What? Where are the missing carbs? I eliminated them. 
My client is pretty curious to find out what you've done with these carbs, Mr. Mitchell. Okay, I have to ask. Who's your client? If you must know, it's me. What? You? Why? I'm a type 2 diabetic, and my doctor told me to cut down on carbs. Okay, this is starting to make more sense to me now. I love fish and chips, but too, too many, many carbs. carbs. You know what? We have to stop doing that. But that's exactly why I'm using jicama. If I'm not mistaken, jicama is a root vegetable that's used in desserts and other unsavory dishes. That's true, but you're missing one thing. Because this has low sugar, it absorbs a lot of flavor, so it's perfect for some savory side dishes such as... And chips. French fries. You get an A. Okay, I think I've got all I need here. Very you good. Get back to your cooking. Thank you. Oh. Just one more thing. Isn't that Colombo's line? I'm gonna wanna make these for myself. Can I get the ingredients? Yes, here's what you do. Look right into the camera there and say, here are the ingredients. Here are the ingredients. Perfect. Okay, here are the ingredients for our low carb fish and chips. First up, the low carb flour. Now we're measuring this in grams because it has to be very specific. First up, 336 grams of almond flour, 70 grams of oat fiber, 50 grams of egg white protein powder, and 16 grams of xanthan gum. Next up, the battered fish. You're going to need two cod fillets, or as many as you think you're going to need. Two cups of that keto flour, one egg, one half cup beer, but you may use more or less depending on the thickness of the batter. One teaspoon each of salt, black pepper, paprika, and garlic powder. And for the chips, you need one jicama. One tablespoon each of paprika, onion powder, garlic powder, salt, black pepper, and avocado oil or olive oil to spray for the air fryer. First up, let's look at that keto flour recipe. Now, I found this on YouTube, and I found it at Victoria's Keto Kitchen. That's her channel. What a great channel she has. She, she just has great keto recipes, including this one for a flour, which you can use ingredients that you can find just about anywhere to make. On the channel, she explains that she's an epileptic, and her keto diet helps her keep it under control. It's marvelous. Uh, she has tons of recipes over there. Go there, really. Check it out. You're going to love it. But then come back here because I'm going to use that flour right now. By the way, it has to be measured in grams according to her instructions because it's more precise. Come on, I'll show you. Almond flour, oat fiber. Uh, this is egg white protein and xanthan gum. First, you put in 336 grams of almond flour. I don't have the conversion on my head, but I think it's like two cups and a little, well, I won't say anything because I'm wrong. Now the oat fiber, <laughs> oat fiber gets everywhere, by the way. You're going to inhale some. Don't worry, it won't give you superpowers. Here's the egg white protein powder. There we go. And the xanthan gum, which is basically a thickening agent. Okay, and once it's all in, we're just going to whisk it all up till it's well mixed in together. And the favorite word on this show is incorporated. All right. That's really all you need to do. It's mixed all together now. And we're going to put it into our container. And this batch is a several, uh, is, is going to last me quite a while. I only need two cups for this recipe. Put it in here nice and easy. Now, let's move forward. Okay, so we have a wet batter to dip the fish in and a dry batter to cover it. And this is going to be the wet batter. There's the one cup of our keto flour we just made. There we go. This is the paprika, the garlic powder, um, the salt, and the pepper. Boom, goes in. One egg. Oh, before I add the egg, I have to mention that when I was prepping for the show, I dropped a dozen eggs. Ooh, thank goodness I have homeowner's insurance. There's the egg. Let's start to stir that up. And now one cup of beer. Now this is non-alcoholic beer and you may need to use more or less depending. Um, you also can use club soda or seltzer, whatever you prefer. It doesn't have to be beer. 
And what you're looking for is a nice consistency where it's not pasty, but it's not soupy. I'm liking this. Now also, so you note, know, uh, as compared to using regular uh, uh, all-purpose flour, this is going to appear a little bit darker because of the almond flour. That's that's fine. That's that's not that's not even an issue. Okay. Now the dry stuff. The dry portion of this is easy. Another cup of the all-purpose flour we just made. Not the all-purpose keto flour. And here is salt, pepper, onion powder, garlic, and paprika. You can go easy on the salt if you don't want it too salty. I did. I did maybe a half teaspoon each. I kind of split that. So here it goes. And we incorporate. Oh, wait. Wait. Stop the presses. I made a rookie mistake. Yeah, I did all this prep. And I forgot my fish. Yeah, this is frozen cod. Thank goodness for the microwave. I'll just defrost it. It's uh, 13 ounces, which is close to a pound. Uh, it takes about six and a half minutes to defrost a pound. So I figure four and a half, five minutes. Let's say five. So defrost, five minutes. Whew. Okay. The fish is defrosted. Yay. Now it's time to batter our fish. Okay, let's try the thick piece first. Into the batter, yes. Get all over it. Yeesh. Yes, I'm using my hands. What the heck? Into here. Into the dry batter we have made. And into the pan. Batter fingers. Beer batter. And right into here now. And there we are. Okay, our fish is all battered and ready for the air fryer. Yep. I'm going to put this in the refrigerator for now because we have to get our fries ready. Time to get out the jicama. As you saw before, here is the jicama, despite what else it may look like. And there's two ways we can actually peel it. We can use a potato peeler. Uh, it's hard and laborious. It's not easy. Or we can use a knife. This is the preferred method. I shall demonstrate. Simply done, you take the knife and you face it away from you. And what I, and what I usually use, I take, I take out the bottom first. You know, this is harder when it's cold. I had this in the refrigerator. And you start to, you don't want to take too much of the meat with it. So you try to go as thin as possible and keep that blade away from your hands. This is not easy to do with one hand, trust me. And keep on peeling. This one's so much better in rehearsal, I'm telling you. There we go. There we go. Really, it's, it, it is harder when it's cold. So leave it at room temperature. And this, this process would be easier. The skin is very fibrous and, and very chewy. You don't want to ingest it. I don't think it hurts you if you ingest it, but it's not a pleasant chewing or culinary experience. There is your peeled jicama for the cheap seats for the first time this season. I <laughs> feel like the Lion King. Ah, my God, I need okay, never mind. You know what? I had a thought. Before we cut this into fries, let's watch some food facts. No one can argue that fish and chips is by far the most popular dish ever invented in England, right? Mm. Wrong. Actually, there's strong evidence to show that fish and chips was actually invented in Portugal. What oh Drama. How it started was Sephardic Jews in Portugal needed the food to help them through their Sabbath, which was from sundown Friday until sundown Saturday. During that time, they couldn't cook or use utensils. So they got whitefish or cod, and they battered it, and they cooked it on Friday. And on Saturday, they could have it left over cold, and the batter actually kept it edible and reasonably fresh. 
And thus, the fish part of fish and chips was developed. I know what you're thinking. How did they get to England? Well, these Jewish immigrants from Portugal came to England and brought their battered fish. It was a great way to make money. So they just hung a box around their neck and they sold it in the streets. And well, the English and battered fish, a love affair was born. Actually, in 1781, the fish was mentioned in British cookbooks as the Jewish way of preserving all fish. Even Thomas Jefferson wrote about sampling the fish prepared in the Jewish fashion. Mazel tov. In 1837, in his book Oliver Twist, Charles Dickens actually referenced fried fish warehouses, which were the predecessors to chippies, you know, chip houses, where the fish would eventually be sold from. Yeah, they, they were sold with bread or sometimes a baked potato there. Eight years later, in 1845, cook and author Alina Sawyer wrote the book, A Shilling Cooking for the People. In the book, he had the recipe, fried fish in the Jewish fashion, in which he featured fish dipped in batter and water and deep fried. Now, it's not entirely known why chips became so popular in Europe, but Belgium has actually staked the claim that they are the ones that made chips famous and a staple throughout Europe. And of course, in America too, where we call them French fries. So according to Belgian legend, in 1680, the river Meuse froze over, so they couldn't do any fishing. So the Belgian women actually took potatoes and cut them into little flat fish. They deep fried them and they fed them to their families so they had sustenance while they waited for the river to thaw. Pretty cool, huh? Think about it. At that point, the fish were the chips. <laughs> no matter how the chips got started, by 1860, chippy shops or fish and chip shops were popping up all over England. A young Ashkenazi by the name of John Malin opened his chippy shop. There he is. This thing had some legs. This stayed open until 1970. That's a long run. Meanwhile, in Manchester, John Lees opened his shop in 1863. Oh yeah, the ball was rolling. By 1910, there were over 25,000 fish and chip shops open throughout the United Kingdom. Yes, now during World War I, many of these stores were allowed to stay open because just serving the fish and chips would boost morale. Prime Minister David Lloyd George actually waived rationing so they could stay open and serve the food uninterrupted. Legendary film director Alfred Hitchcock, well, he lived above a chippy shop as a boy. As a matter of fact, it was a family business. Wow, he, he directed so many scary horror movies. I wonder if he found anything scary about living over a fish and chip shop. Good evening. I regret to inform you that we are all out of malt vinegar. We are also light on mashed peas. That's screaming. It's intoxicating. I must do something to make people scream in the future. Oh yes, and one of our burners are out too. When World War II came along, the tradition of keeping the chippy shops open continued. As a matter of fact, Winston Churchill was quoted as saying, a hot meal of fish and chips are good companions. And now it's time for fish and chip trivia. Dating all the way back to World War I, fish and chips were traditionally served in a cone made out of newspaper. And this continued until the 1980s when they figured out that maybe it wasn't the best thing for hot oily food to be in contact with newsprint. Uh, they still have it like this, but it's now wax paper and it's not made out of newsprint. In the UK, how popular are chippy shops? Well, they outnumber McDonald's 10 to one. Ooh, no happy meal for you. Want another reason to celebrate? Well, June 4th is National Fish and Chip Day. This is one of my favorite pieces of trivia. In England, you can get fish and chips flavored potato chips, or as they call it, crisps. Oh baby, oh yeah, gotta get me some of those. And finally, your average order of fish and chips has about 800 calories. Mine's gonna have even less. Four out of five British people 
visit a chippy shop at least once a year and they consume 382 million pounds of fish and chips. And that's Food Facts. This is actually real easy. You take half the, half the jicama, cut it in half again, put it on its side, and just take little steak fry size slices. Like that. Now, these I find too thick or too wide, so I cut them in half. And put them in there. These need to be cut in half too. They go in here too. That needs to be cut in half. If they're too thick or if they're not consistent, they will cook at different rates, so you don't want that to happen. Here we go. So, big, hunky steak fries, right? And do this with them. Right down the middle. All right. There are your chips, your fries. Okay. Now we want to dehydrate them a little bit. And the quick way, well, what you can do is leave them in your refrigerator overnight, but you can also put in the microwave. So I'm going to put these in the microwave for eight minutes. Time cook. Eight minutes, then we gotta let it cool. Okay, these are out of the microwave and they have now cooled. They've been a little bit dehydrated, which is good. Now we take about uh, a quarter cup of avocado oil and our spices. You can, of course, put whatever you want in this. Keep going on. And now we just mix it really thoroughly. See, they do, they look like chips. One more up here, there we go. Look at that chips. Now we're ready to put both in the air fryer. Now these are gonna pretty much cook at the same exact time. First we go to this first air fryer and we put the fries in. We don't have to spritz with oil, they're already well oiled with the avocado oil. Just make sure you spread them out evenly so they don't overlap too much. Now these are gonna go for 25 minutes, so at 400. All right, I'm gonna set the timer. I'm gonna set the timer for five because when this hits five, we're gonna put the fish in. Okay, we have about 20 seconds left until the five minutes are up. I'm spritzing and put it in here. And this is also gonna go on 400 for 20 minutes. So they should be done about the same time. This has 20 minutes left. Here we go. Now I'm gonna set this for 10. Why? Because I'm gonna shake this and then 10 more and we're done. And chips. Hello there, Governor. There's your fish and chips, just like you ordered it, mate. Yeah, there's a little bit of Australian accent in there. But anyway, this is the fish and chips. This is low carb. This is the keto fries, which is actually jicama. And this is the fish with that keto flour I'm trying for the first time. I'm really anxious to try that. I have tried the fries before. Now they look dark, they do. I kept them in a little bit longer. I wanted to get them a little crispier, but you don't have to keep them this long. They taste great. You know, when they have a little bit of that burnt taste, I mean, just a little, I mean, don't, don't charbroil them. It's really good. So let me try this. Oh, the jicama, there you go. Mmm, it crunches. Totally savory, salty. Ah. One thing, does not have the same texture as a potato. Feels initially like it's underdone, but it's not. It's really good. It's tasty, it absorbs all that flavor, the garlic, the paprika, the onion powder. Mmm, mmm, really good. They don't get soft and mushy on the inside, like fries, but it's a great alternative. And I have it all the time. Mmm, mmm, they're not gonna last long. I love it. Now for the fish, I'm really excited because I've tried other, you know, mixtures of flour before. You buy them, they're expensive. Okay, here we go. Boil the fish, the keto flour. Mmm, mmm. The fish are soft and flaky. The batter crunches. It tastes really good. It really does taste good. 
And for all the salt I put in it, it's a little undersalted. <laughs> but I can add some later. But yeah, um, wow. Mmm. Mmm. It's really, really good. Oh my gosh. I did make one mistake with it. Oh. I did make one mistake. I want to let you know. One of the key ingredients in this is xanthan gum. And once you add water to it, like you did when I, not water, but I added the beer and the egg, it firms up fast. Yeah. So if you're going to do that, do it right before you drench or, or dench or whatever you call them, right before you dip the fish in, or else it gets really thick and hard to cover. Like that's why I had a hard time covering my fish. I got it done. But next time, either I'm going to leave out this anthem gum or I'm going to do it right away. Just, just a hint. This is great. Oh, I need some more fish. More, more. I have, I have some lemon. Oh, it's perfect. Mmm. I love the crust. Oh, so, so satisfying. Ah. Well, that's it for our season premiere. I hope you enjoyed it. I'll be back here again in two weeks. Remember, until then, be well, eat good. On the next episode of Off the Cuff, today I'm going to be presenting a dish that has worldwide appeal, ratatouille. Meanwhile, my AI home assistant has a meltdown. Can you tell me the ingredients to ratatouille? <coughs> Somebody fell in a well? You'll get a bang out of food facts. I'm in Bialdi. Well, that's Maya in Bialdi. She hosts Jeopardy. She was on Big Bang Theory. Find out anybody can make ratatouille. It's low carb and it's vegan. This is terrific. Join me for an all new season of Off the Cuff Healthy Cooking with Craig Mitchell. Alternate Sundays right here on Strong.